Hello and welcome to another Green Stuff World video. I'm Jeff Skynet and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint a skin tone on this hill giant. For this we're going to be using these skin tones and I'm also adding and we'll also be using this pink and yellow so as not to lose saturation during the highlight process. So the first step is the easiest one. We're going to use the darkest skin tone to cover all the skin area. And once we've covered all the skin area with the base color, we're going to add a bit of the first highlight color to the previous color. As I apply the first brush stroke, I see that there's not much difference in this mix. So I add a bit more of the highlight color. And now with this color, we're going to go over all the areas that we painted before except for the deepest shadows, which are the planes that are facing downwards towards the ground, which will be the parts that are receiving less light. So once we've painted all the highlight areas, we'll have established all our shadow areas as well. These will be very important to follow in the next steps. Now I add a bit more of our first highlight color to our previous mix to carry on highlighting. And we're going to repeat the same process as before. We're going to highlight all the volumes that are facing towards the light. But this time, instead of covering over all the areas that we highlighted in the previous step, we're going to leave part of that step visible in the areas that are touching the shadow. This way we'll start creating a color gradient towards our brightest highlight. In these first steps it's very important to connect all the highlights with each other. This means drawing a line from one part of the highlight of the volume towards the closest highlight of the volume next to it. Lines as veins that go over various muscles. All these details make the skin look much more organic once it's finished. Now for the next step, I mix in a bit more highlight colors to our previous mix and carry on highlighting. Now same as before, I'm going over the previous volumes that we highlighted, but without covering them entirely, leaving a bit of the previous step behind. If you've noticed in the background, I'm using a white paper sheet to unload the brush from the palette. This is because using the paper towel unloads too much paint off of the brush. And in, these step, and in these first steps, I, I like to have the brush fully loaded to make it easier to paint the volumes. And as these volumes are so big, I, I need a lot of paint on the brush. But the paper sheet is also very useful to test the color that you're using against the previous colors that you've already used. This way you can tell if it's too bright or too dark and you can adjust from there. At this point, I'm seeing a few shadows that are a bit too dark than what they should be. 
So before moving on to the next highlight colour, I'm going to use the glaze to blend out them transitions a bit. For this I add some water to our colour mix. For glazing you want the paint to be very very thin and have very little of it on, the, on your paintbrush. So to soften out these transitions I'm going to start the brush stroke in our deepest shadow and drag it towards our highlight area. This will slowly soften those transitions, achieving a much softer skin this way. And now you can see we've softened a lot of those transitions. Okay, we're going to carry on highlighting and I carry on adding our highlight colors to our previous mix to make it slightly more lighter than the previous color we've used. And as we carry on highlighting, we're going to be losing saturation. So for that, I add a bit of the pink color into this mix. And same as before, we're going to paint over all the volumes that we did in the previous step, but without covering all the volume, leaving part of our previous work visible. As you can see, the way I use the brush making small lines creates the jagged edge on the cut line. This is where one color ends and meets the next color. Having this, this jagged edge instead of a straight line will make it much easier to blend and soften after. Okay, we're going to carry on highlighting, adding more, adding more of the lighter colors to our mix. But this time on top of the pink color, I'm going to also add a bit of the yellow color. The yellow color adds saturation as well, but it also adds a lot of brightness. So now with this color, in some areas, I'm going to reduce drastically the area of application. These areas will be the muscles that are furthest away from the light source. Now for the final highlight, I'm going to add a lot of yellow to our mix and now we're only going to be covering a very small area of our highlight and we continue drastically reducing the area of application. As you can see, even in these last steps, I continue drawing veins and connecting highlights through lines. Again, all these lines and imperfections will make the skin look very organic. So now that we've finished highlighting our skin, we're going to give him a bit more character. For this we're going to use the deep black dipping ink and we're going to thin it with a bit of water. And I unload most of it on the paper sheet until I see that it's quite transparent. And with this we're going to paint some hairs over the skin.
another thing that we're going to do to add more personality to the skin. We're going to go back to our skin base color, thinning it down with a bit of water. We're going to paint some marks and blemishes over the skin. This will add a lot of naturalness to the skin. Another thing that we can do is paint some tattoos. For this we're going to use our green dipping ink. And the same as when painting the hairs, we're going to unload most of it on the paper. With the tattoos you can really have fun creating any design you want or copying some references off the internet. Okay, so after adding all these details to the skin, we're going to move on to the final step, which is using this umber flesh dip. We're going to thin it down in the airbrush with a bit of water and pointing with the airbrush from below. We're going to shoot at all the shadow areas. This will help define a bit more all our shadow areas, adding contrast and also adding saturation to our skin. So pointing from below, so pointing from below, very short burst from the airbrush, I'm going to darken all the shadow areas. As you can see, this is also helping us smoothen out all the transitions as well. Okay, so this is the final result. As you can see, once we've painted the rest of the elements of the miniature, the skin really pops. I hope you've enjoyed the process and, and find it useful to add to your recipes. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!